Well, I've really gone and done it this time, guys. I have bought myself a gladiator. And th this, this isn't a gladiator. They're, they're not out yet. I, I had to order one. This is a beautiful Wrangler Rubicon, though. I know, it's really weird for me. I usually buy broken cars or really depreciated, really messed up cars. And for me to buy something brand new is really a stretch for me. It's, it's not something I would normally do, but I am just so hyped up for a new Jeep convertible pickup truck. There's actually three vehicles that have been really hyped lately in the last 10 years that we've been waiting forever to come out. And one of them was a Jeep Wrangler pickup truck, which why did it take so long? But it's here now, so I can't complain much. The second one was the rebirth of the Toyota Supra, which Total failure, horrible. BMW Z4 rebadged, it's, it's basically not a Toyota. I don't understand that one at all. And then there's the Ford Bronco, which I've been waiting on that one for over 10 years and it doesn't seem like it's anywhere close to coming out. Maybe, maybe the next year or two, I don't know, but it's not a pickup truck. So not only did I order a Jeep Gladiator, I ordered the limited launch edition Jeep Gladiator, which they're only making 4,140. 30? Is it for something in Ohio, their area code, their zip code, something like that. It's a limited edition of the new Gladiator. It's a Rubicon. It has every single option and it's $63,000. It's too damn high. I, I, I couldn't believe it myself. I'm going to have to get rid of one of my vehicles to pay for it. We'll talk about that later. But I wanted to have one of the first Rubicon Gladiator convertible Jeeps. I've always wanted a convertible pickup truck. I don't understand why there aren't more convertible pickup trucks. It, it just it just makes sense to have the panels that come off just like a Wrangler. So I'm super excited, but it was quite an event ordering this Gladiator Rubicon. They were doing a special event where you had to put in your name for consideration on a single one day. And then a concierge would call you. They would set you up with a dealer of your choice and you would complete your order. Didn't go that way. They had a website. You go up to the website and you're supposed to put in your information, but that website was supposed to go live at midnight. It went live at about 5 p.m., 6 p.m. I went to the site and realized that it was live and went, this isn't right. So I actually put in my information about six hours before I was supposed to and got my order in six hours early. But I was a little scared, so I put in a second order at midnight to make sure that that order would go in as well. And now I currently have two Gladiator Rubicons? Maybe, hopefully they'll let me just get one. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It was supposed to be a very exclusive, uh, I don't know, white glove kind of launch for a Jeep where a concierge calls you up, sweets, talks to you, tells you how smart you are for buying a Gladiator and then refers you to the dealer. But when they called, it sounded more like a telemarketer's phone call. They didn't ask for the head of the household or anything, but it was kind of a script. And then they tried to send me to a dealer that was not my choice. It was more like the one that was closer down the street to me. And I didn't want to do that. So I actually got my preferred dealer, took a little wrangling to get with Robbins Motors. Clay Robbins is a friend of mine. But then after getting everything all confirmed with Clay, with Robbins Motors, the other dealer called me up to make sure that this dealer was taking good care of me. And if they didn't do certain things, then I may not get a Gladiator, so just to be safe, I should probably get the Gladiator with them. It turned into like a normal car dealership kind of scenario when it's supposed to be, I'm special, look at me, I'm special, paying $63,000 for a Gladiator, which obviously I'm, I'm kind of special for paying that much. Clay, he's got the keys for me. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So this is the color I ordered. There's not a lot of options with the launch edition. It's just pick five or six colors. And the one thing I'm kind of bummed about is it's body matched colors on the fenders and the roof. I would really prefer to have a Rubicon like this with the black fenders and the black roof, but I'm still really excited. I haven't even really sat in one of these new Rubicons and it is really nice in here. So what's different about these? Because the last one I drove as a Rubicon was like a 2012. So the uh, Jeep is quite a bit different. It's a longer body style and it actually sits up higher. Um, it rides a lot smoother than the previous iteration. It's got an eight-speed transmission which shifts a lot smoother, um, goes through the gears a lot better. Engine's got around 300 horsepower on it, so it's got plenty of get up and go. 
I didn't realize how expensive these things have gotten too, because you're. Yeah, so I kind of yeah. freaked out on the price, and then you told me one of these fully built in a Wrangler is almost sixty thousand dollars. So they're pretty high. Um, yeah. We just sold one that was a fifty-eight thousand dollars sticker price that was Whew. fully loaded. Wow. One thing that's really cool about this, of course, because you take the top of the Jeep off, the whole dash is waterproof. So you close this up right here, and you can just spray that down with water. This is encased in waterproof material, and everything is okay. Really? So the roof off, it rains, no big deal. You're good to go. Snows in a foot in here, no big deal. Yep. Take it to the bottom of the ocean. Might be a big deal. How long do you think it'll be? Um, they said May deliveries for the launch editions. Mmm. So I have to wait a month yeah. or more. Well, I'm super excited. I'm excited for you. Thank this... you. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of money, and I am going to have to get rid of something to pay for this. Obviously, it's going to be the truck that I have already, my Sierra Denali. So, well, I'll have my truck lit ready for you here soon. Yeah. Got to fix it from the little rollover accident I had mudding the other day. Uh, Bit the frame. Backs on that. It's clean. It's still clean. I never claimed. Never claimed on the insurance. So, you already gave me the number, so you're stuck. Oh, I know. I was joking with Clay. I didn't wreck the Denali. I didn't roll it. It's totally fine. And I was going to wrap up with my final thoughts on this Denali before. I traded it in, but in the day since I recorded that video, a lot has happened with the Gladiator order process and other people ordering Gladiators that I thought I needed to continue my story here. Now, a lot of you know that Stradman has also ordered a Gladiator. It's nice to know that I'm not the only one crazy enough to pay you 60 something thousand dollars for a Gladiator. I got to, got to have one. Stradman has that in common. He also recently got a puppy. And so did I. Here's Frank. He's doing just fine. He showed the build sheet and he showed the launch edition as being an $11,000 item. And when you do build the launch edition, it does show it as an $11,000 option, but he described that as mostly fluff. $11,000 for some badges, special stitching, and that's it. When it's actually not true. The launch edition comes with basically every option the Gladiator has. About every one except for the dual tops. You don't get the hard top and the soft top. So it doesn't list every option that it has, but they just lump it into that launch edition package for $11,000. So if you go and build one on their website right now, you build a Gladiator, a non-launch edition, and you hit every single option that the launch edition Gladiator has, then you pay for a launch edition Gladiator. Now, when I first thought about buying a Gladiator, I thought it'd be cool to get the cheapest version of the new Gladiator, get a stripper sport model with a manual transmission, roller windows, no power locks, just a stripper. But then I saw the tow rating for the stick was something like 4,500 pounds, which is way too little for me. I actually use this hitch a lot on my Denali towing my broken cars, and the trailer and the car is usually at or above 4,500 pounds, so that wasn't going to work. So, do you need down? Here, come on down. There you go. It's getting a little anxiety here. So ordering the cheapest... Oh, no, come back here. No, don't run away. Frank, Frank. Frank, stop. Come here. Come here. Come on. Get... Stop. God dang it. Stop, Frank. Oh, you little jerk. Yeah, yeah, kiss me now. Oh. oh. There, get in there. Oh. Oh. Okay, where was I? Um, the cheapest one couldn't tow, so I had to do an automatic transmission, and it wasn't the cheapest one. If I'm doing automatic transmission, when I might as well have all the glitzy technology with the Rubicon package. And when I hit all the options I wanted with the Rubicon, it was still like $58,000. And if I wanted that build, where I could have actually got the fenders that I wanted, the black fenders and the black roof, I would have had to wait months and months. And I'm not a very patient person, uh, so I decided not to wait and do the launch edition. Hopefully that makes sense. Clay's also taking really good care of me in terms of price with my trade-in on this truck, but before I get into that here in a bit, there's another weird thing I'm noticing with the Gladiator order process that's happening now, and it's hitting the news wave just about... Oh, no! It's hitting the news waves that the Jeep Gladiator Launch Edition has sold out all in one day with no problems at all. And I know that's not true 
because keep in mind, I did those two orders. The one that I put in early, like six hours early, and then the other one, I put in another one at midnight. I used two different emails, and the emails and the phone calls I got for my first order at 6 p.m. came in about noon on the actual day you're supposed to order the Jeeps. And in my other account that I put in a different email, I got a message from Jeep saying that the orders had exceeded their expectations and that they were going to get back to me in two to three business days. Jeep, I really don't understand how the launch of your Gladiator could have exceeded your expectations and you'd be overwhelmed and need to get back to us two or three days later because you were only selling some 4,000 and odd gladiators, right? So it's a first come first serve basis. The first 4,000 some odd emails you got wanting a gladiator would have gotten a gladiator and the other people, well, they could have bought one later. So what's the problem? Now a little birdie told me that the concierge service, the call center that was handling this launch really dropped the ball and they couldn't get to all of the people and they didn't sell all of the gladiators on the day of the launch like they were supposed to. Maybe they had 4,000 or so email inquiries, but they hadn't gone through and called everyone yet to mark those vehicles as sold. Obviously, they didn't get a hold of me on the second one. And then in the email, they said the gladiator launch was still available. And now it's raining. So many distractions. Now, obviously, if they didn't have enough normal customers to buy Gladiator launch editions, they could say they sold them all because they're selling them to dealers who would then resell them. It makes sense, but they had a whole PR thing set up and obviously they went through with it anyway, saying they had sold all of them in one day. They were all gone. It's all over the internet. Every website's running with it. They already posted YouTube videos showing, hey, we sold them all, but uh, I know that you haven't filled all your orders yet. You emailed me and then somebody's telling me, a little birdie is telling me that you haven't. Hopefully me pointing this out isn't sending my gladiator to the back of the line. It'll be the 4,190th built, which would suck because Jeep, I am really excited. Please don't punish me. I'm, I'm really excited. But now it's sad face time. It's time to say goodbye to my Sierra Denali because I'm trading it in early. And since it's raining, I guess I'll talk about it inside the truck. Move over, Frank. Excuse me. Don't jump out again. Oh, the interior. Oh, I'm so sorry, Clay. Oh, no. Maybe I should have this thing detailed now before I send it off to get traded in, but I guess the last time I had a vehicle detailed, right before I sold it, it got stolen, so that's not the best idea. Now, I'm actually giving away my Denali early. I'm trading it in early to get the most money for it, and since I have plenty of cars, I won't need it. Now, Clay didn't want me to go into great detail on the specific sales numbers, how much I'm paying, all that kind of stuff, but I will say the trade difference between the $63,000 Launch Edition Gladiator and this Sierra Denali, which is two years old and has 20 something thousand miles on it, is less than 20 grand, which is really impressive. It's one of the things that I said about this Sierra Denali when I bought it and traded in my old GMC Sierra is the resale value on these is just insane. Value-wise, luxury pickup trucks are the smartest luxury cars you can buy because they don't depreciate like a Mercedes or a BMW 7 Series where you drive it off a lot and they're already worth half of what you paid for it. With rebates and discounts, this Denali sold for $53,000 a couple of years ago, and you can kind of do the math, less than $20,000 difference on a $63,000 Gladiator. So this thing really hasn't depreciated all that much at all. It's unbelievable. And other than Robin's Motors having to do a little extra cleaning, I'm not worried about them not making any money on this because somebody is going to buy this truck and they are making money on the Gladiator. It's not like I'm stealing from them. It, it, it's a fair deal. But it's not going to be a completely painless transition because there are some things with this Denali that I know are much, much better than the Gladiator, even though I haven't seen one or driven it yet. The magnetic ride control on this truck is insanely good. It is so smooth, so comfortable, so quiet, and I know I'm gonna be giving up some of that smoothness and the quietness with a convertible Jeep pickup truck that's made to go off-road. It's gonna be a lot more hardcore off-road. The suspension's gonna be stiffer, I imagine. It's not gonna be like this. I also have a 6.2 liter V8 in this Sierra Denali with 420 something horsepower. Way, way more than the Pinstar V6 that's gonna be in the Gladiator. So I imagine the Gladiator towing isn't going to be nearly as good as this powerful Sierra Denali with its active magnetic suspension. So I am giving up some things other than a good chunk of change to go into the Gladiator Rubicon, but in my opinion, 
it's still totally worth it. The funky concierge thing, the weird ordering stuff, has not dampened my spirits one bit. I'm still thrilled to get this thing. I'm really excited. So Jeep, I really hope you don't bury my order somewhere because I am really excited. I can't wait to get this thing and share it with you all on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. It's not a pickup truck. I just, I might have broken this one. Oh, there's. This one. Well used. Oh. And you got a loose, you got a loose nut here. Oh, is that the? No, You're, no way. You got a missing nut. We've been looking for that for like three days now. Thanks. I found your nuts. <laughs>